Welcome back to Film Hooligans. I'm your host, John the Host, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Mr. Jason Alt. Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming back. Today, we are traveling to Argentina to talk about a 2021 film that is just being released in the States. This is uh, directed by A.R. Blasco. We're talking about Lava. Everybody on the planet watches Netflix. Oh, yeah? Sammy, Daddy, she is amazing. Yes, we've actually met. Bye. If he turns around, it means he wants something. It's cool. Yeah. Here we go, guys. Shut up, baby. What the? I think it's starting again. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Sorry, sorry, pardon me. Wait, don't, don't look at your phone. What does the news say? Invasion. Welcome to the survival manual created by Lava. Understand this, our screens now belong to them. Everybody together. Let's stick together. Or both of you together? Or how about all of us together? Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> Guys, they killed the emo. Hey, Bama. Stupid idea. Oh. oh, I'm naked. What do I do here? What do I have to do? Deborah. So, Jason, what do you think about South Park 5, Lava in the Cabeza? I guess you should say up top, I, I didn't super love this. Um, you know, we are, we're supposed to be honest and, uh, you know... We could recommend this movie to the people that we think are going to enjoy it because I don't think there's nobody that would like this. But like personally, I was not a huge fan. And I think we'll get into exactly why a little bit later. Yeah, just early thoughts. I completely agree with that. It just feels like a very specific style of humor that's probably pretty popular in Argentina. It felt competently made like this is a filmmaker that's made a couple films under his belt uh so this particular one is we're talking about the english releasing from rock salt releasing and it has an american dub cast uh led by janine garofalo and we'll kind of get into that but let's give like a broad sense of what lava is about lava is it's the the name of a, a comic book i guess that um the, the comic book was used to disseminate information because these aliens uh, have come to Earth and they have taken over everyone's phones and the TV. Like every device that people sk stare at has taken over their minds and made them into zombies, which is, you know, just a super original premise. Can I just point out, like, it was about time someone made some media where they're like, you know, people staring at their phones too much, that's a bad thing. So <laughs> I'm glad someone was brave enough to, you know, to, to, <laughs> to honor such a, a bold new premise as that. Right. So um, tattoo artists are the most important people uh, in this new future, and uh, the, the comic book is used to disseminate information. Um, so Lava is also... It's the comic book, but Lava is also, I think it's either the aliens or the thing stopping the aliens. It's it's kind of There's like unclear. factions, right? So it's like yeah. there's the Lava faction and then there's another faction and it's kind of competing or conflicting with the other one, but they're all kind of assholes or maybe they're not. It's, it's a little vague. I felt like it's just like it has this storytelling cadence that is just very unfamiliar to me. I felt a little lost at times. It just felt weird. Uh, but yeah, this is from director A.R. Blasco. This is his third feature. He's done four overall. He's made another animated feature, at least another animated feature called El Sol that looks very similar to Lava in style. And his newest film, La Va uh, Vagancia, is a live action film, uh, which is interesting because it has a lot of the same cast argentinian cast uh as as the lava cast um and it'd be interesting to see his directing style in a live action setting um because it this isn't without 
any merit to it. There is some some fun things here. It, it definitely is kind of outside the box, albeit a little, you know, unoriginal as far as that that initial plot goes. But it is it does feel competently made like like someone knew what they were doing made it. Sure. Like the animation I didn't like very much. It was just a little everyone kind of looked like uh weebles, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. They wobble, but they don't fall down. This cast, um, so like, but like, I was able to get past that and, and really dislike this movie on the merits. So I, I wouldn't say that I was thrown by the animation. Like that, that's something you can get over. I don't, I don't think the weird animation style really inhibits your total inability to enjoy the movie um, for other reasons. So uh, the, the animation actually wasn't bad, and some of it was pretty cool. Like when mm-hmm. people were tattooing on a giant snake as the snake moved i thought that was pretty sweet the, mm-hmm. you know there was there was some stuff to like about the the animation some of it yeah and i i think that it's it's unfortunate cuz i i totally understand this filmmakers want to get a broader and more international audience for his for his work i mean who wouldn't want to but some things just don't sync up correctly internationally and i think this might be one this feels so foreign that even though we got the english dub it still felt very odd like even with the american cast and you know i I love janine garofalo and i think she did a a good enough job but like i feel like the 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 filmmaker just kind of gave the lines uh to to these american voiceover you know the dubbed actors and and to like varying it wasn't just like varying degrees of performances but the quality level was varying degrees it sounded like some people were just like filming it on their phone and, and like just not taking the project seriously and that that felt really unfortunate so i would almost have rathered watch the the actual like spanish version with subtitles and i think i probably would have liked it a little bit more Speaking of Janine Garofalo, I'm really kind of surprised she signed on to this. Like, if if this was available to to watch in Spanish before she agreed to dub over it, um, I'm I'm really surprised. Uh, there was okay, so like, I'm not I'm not like a prude, right? Like, I wish this had had more jokes because it didn't. Like there's some stuff that was played for laughs. I'm like, oh, that's just racism, though. That's not really a joke. Right. Versus like the whole thing was a little serious. Like I could have used a lot more jokes. If you're going to make like a South Park type deal, like it better be funny. Mm -hmm. So not only was it like boring for most of it and there weren't a ton of jokes, like I I felt like they don't know the difference between like something being funny and then just like having a squinty eyed buck tooth Chinese character do ninja stuff. Right. <laughs> exactly. Like I was like, yeah, what year was this made? Oh, 1921. Like right. it, it just, it was, <laughs> I, I guess maybe they have different sensibilities in Argentina and that's fine. Right. But like, <sighs> it felt like 15 Asian people years are ago. Good at like martial arts and gymnastics, like isn't even, like it's it's just not a joke anymore. It's not like I'm a prude. I'm literally a stand-up comic. I just don't think that that like just racial stereotypes like count as anything. Right. Right. Like it's it wasn't funny, and also it was just like gonna offend people. So like, what was the point? Exactly, and you know. If you are going to go just the, like completely push the envelope route and, and go the South Park route, like, they, yeah, they fire off some, some F-bombs in here. But I was expecting, if you're going to go full-on adult, then I was expecting that to, them to push the envelope because besides the few F-bombs in here, it was nothing that South Park hasn't been doing for 30 years, but even, you know, more watered down. So Most of it was PG. Yeah, That's totally. crazy. This felt like PG with F-bombs, like, out of nowhere. Right, right. And it, and it's it's probably our fault for just being, like, jaded Americans because we see worst thing on the news every five minutes. But I was just like, what tone are you going for? Because it's definitely not meant for kids, but it's definitely not crazy enough to, to satisfy American audiences for sure. You know, maybe again, maybe in Argentina, this kind of thing 
works, but not everything has to translate to another market. So that's why I would be very interested to see what uh, this filmmaker would do as far as, uh, and I don't know whether his live action film is a serious tone, but I feel like there's, there's structure and, and there's bones there to, to maybe make a, a enjoyable watching film, but just this one wasn't it for me. I wonder if there were jokes that got lost in translation. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe they were like double entendres in the original Spanish. And mm. then just like, it just didn't work when translated English. Cause there are a lot of scenes where people are just arguing. And like, I bet that is where some of the jokes could have been mm -hmm. because it's just like people yelling at each other and in English, like it just was sort of like tedious. Yeah. So maybe like, maybe this dialogue rules, you know, Maybe like something like clerks translated into Polish just is not funny at all. <laughs> right. Yeah. And people are like, why do Americans love clerks so much? <laughs> like maybe just like all the jokes got lost in translation. So I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt. But like if that's the case, the only people who should watch this are the people who speak Spanish and will watch it in the original Spanish. Like I do not recommend it in uh, the English translation. Like, I, I'm willing to be charitable and say it's possible that like just some of the stuff didn't work because it, it was lost in translation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lost in translation was a better movie. We should have watched that. <laughs> I do all the time. Uh, and, and one more thing, it's not really a spoiler, but there's a point where the actual movie that we're watching just completely shuts off. It just completely ends and it becomes a series of unrelated comedy vignettes which mm. is just, I was just like scratching my head. That, like, I don't know if it was just a pad the runtime, but, or again, if that's just something that's a normally used practice in these type of films. But I was just like, what the hell? Because, and it's not like it even kind of wraps up in a, in a way where you're like, oh, okay, I just saw a movie. It literally ends. And then we're just doing skits. And I'm just like, what the fuck just happened here? But, you know, Again, I don't want like to kill a it. 90s rap album or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't want to kill it too much because I feel like it just wasn't for me. If you like this type of thing, like like maybe we have viewers in Argentina and they're just like these stupid Americans, like they just don't get it. <laughs> no. <laughs> and you want like, the Argentinian equivalent of the uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The BAFTA? I don't know. I don't know what you want. So I'd recommend this to people that like this kind of thing. Unfortunately, that's not me. It doesn't sound like it was you either. Uh, you know what I would like? I'm not going to say this is for nobody. I would like somebody Hispanic to watch it in the uh, original Spanish mm -hmm. and let us know if it's funny. Yeah. I would like to, to watch in the original. I'll even I'll even put that out there. I You know, maybe it just sounds better. Maybe the, the actors, like the inflection would be like, oh, that's where the joke was supposed to be. Because, like, maybe Janine sure. Garofalo is just like, what? I don't know. You know, I'm just going to read the lines that are on the paper. Tell us what you think in the comments below. Yeah. Thank you for checking out this review. I want to thank everyone at, at Rock Salt Releasing uh, for letting us uh, talk about this film. And, uh, yeah, let, let us know in the comments below. Follow us on the Twitters at film underscore hooligans. Jason, where can everyone find you? I am Jason E. Ald on Twitter. And I am at John the Host. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time.